Welcome back to the channel. As you can see, we're going to be reacting and spectating a top player in Warzone, and this is Doug is Raw. You can see his stats right there on the screen, as well as all the matches that were a part of this particular gameplay. So no funny business in terms of VPNing, and to take an extra step further, I've actually included the KDs of pretty much everyone he's running up against, and as you'll see, the majority of them are over one KD. If you enjoyed the video, learned something new, please do me a favor, hit the like button. If you're brand new, want to find your way back from more Call of Duty content, double check, make sure you are subscribed with notifications on. Links to Doug's channels on both Twitch and YouTube will be in the top of the description. So if you want to kind of pick his brain, we're going to talk about some of the things he does that I haven't really focused on with a lot of our top players. And it's very beneficial for anyone who struggles with these situations where you have to go up against a duo. This is solo duos. And what you're going to end up seeing is a lot of times um doug what he does is obviously he's accurate good player those are normal things with good players is to be accurate pop this dead silence he's going to come back around get this kill you can see their stats we have a 0.54 not that great but we have a 1.18 um and then we're going to see you know he ends up killing one of these guys again in a little bit but what i did want to focus on is one of the things that he does really great is compartmentalizing gunfights and what i mean by that is he breaks a 4v1 into a 3v1 to a 2v1 into a 1v1. And pretty much throughout that process, he's trying to force the engagement so he can get his gunfights, essentially so every gunfight is a 1v1 in rapid succession, where he gets the opportunity to reload, plate, and position himself so that he could take as least damage as possible while getting the downs, not getting greedy with a thirst. Uh, we'll kind of see how that plays out. There's a lot of situations in this gameplay where it'll be like, yep, that was a, an awesome play. He played it the right way. And one of the things that blew up Doug way back in the day, he was known as one of the best, if not the best, Blackout player. So if you're a fan of Blackout, you already know who Doug is Raw is. Um, and so right here, one of the big things that a lot of people are doing for these high kill games is they are looting this particular building. You do the contract, you go in there, you get a hundred grand, which is amazing. Plus you get all the perks. Plus, you get a few weapon perks for Modern Warfare guns if you're using Modern Warfare guns. The loadout I'm pretty sure he's using is the AMAX and the LC-10. LC-10 is a very good close quarters SMG. Like I said, it's a very good uh, sniper support as well. It just fits in there. And then obviously the AMAX is still the top dog at range. So he gear comes in, clears out a team, gets the loot. And then what's nice about this is you also get hardline. So anything you buy will also be cheaper um well after you get your loadout so right here he doesn't pop the the stopping power yet because obviously once you get your loadout you're going to put it in your loadout gun knowing that you're heading directly there luckily when he comes over here pops the loadout throws it really quick and then he's going to go ahead and pop the uav so he has the uav and there's like two people immediately on him these could be stream snipers these things happen all the time literally the timing of this he comes out, and you can see he doesn't overpeak. He comes out, boom, and getting drops right over to the right. So he just kind of already had his spot. So you can see the guy on the minimap, takes him out, mounts. Uh, he utilizes mounting. I think there's a lot of people that don't utilize that quite as much. Um, obviously, it's not the, the perfect for cover because your body still sticks out, but it's just one of those things. Um, earlier when he was looting, he did throw down a bouncing Betty, which we're going to see come back to give him a free kill. But it's just one of those things that it's worth grabbing and picking up as you go. Um, so right there, calling in a super UAV, um, just get a kind of an idea of where everyone's at on the map. And then what most of the top players will do is they're going to go to the biggest congestion of players so they can get the rack up the kills. Um, and that's just kind of a normal thing there. So he jumps in the Bertha. We've seen this a lot of times with our other top players. The, the game is a lot about economy. So he got the kill there. And somehow the guy, I think he jumps and falls to his death. I'm not sure exactly what happens, but the guy ended up dying. And that was the same player from earlier, 1.18. There's another guy right here. He comes through. You can see he kind of jumps and then strafes back into it. Pretty basic gunfight. The other guy bunny hopped into it. Um, and that guy was a 1.05 KD player with 58 wins and about 2% win ratio. So now you can see he's going to push over to stadium. And there's a lot of times these aggression where... They're pushing up, but they're also trying to third party. Uh, so anytime you see gunfire on your map, you generally want to push that as aggressive as possible. And that's why suppressors and ghosts are so important. So you don't get third party. So he downed a couple, uh, he downed one player there on the right, and then he downed another one on the left. There's two different teams here. He ended up finishing that guy off, which had a 1.06. 
He ends up shooting this, keeping in mind that with the specialist bonus, you're getting um, FMJ. Um, and not a lot of people realize how broken FMJ is. And we're going to kind of wrap around back to that a little bit later on in the game. But if you end up with the specialist bonus, one, contracts are very valuable because of point man. But FMJ allows you to just wall bang stuff that you wouldn't normally do. And then you also get an opportunity to destroy vehicles. That's a pretty basic move. A 1.44 KD player. Um, he just rolled up on him, jumped out. And a lot of times the animation, we've seen this. Uh, aggressive players are very comfortable when their vehicle is full health, especially with the Bertha. Um, they push, jump out, and take that person out. In a 2v1, a little bit less practical. Um, you don't see it quite as often, but you can use the vehicle as cover. Just got to be careful you don't run yourself over when you're doing that, right? So he comes out, no. takes out one. He's looking around. He gets fully plated so that he can re-challenge his gunfight. He can see the guy's selfing. He ends up downing, no. re-challenging the left, no. and then finishing off the right. Those guys, 1.19, 1.09 KDs with combined about 70 kills there. So pretty clean. He's already on 11 kill game, which is definitely high for, for the vast majority of people who play. And even though you might not have his accuracy, you might not have his movement, you might not have the game sense, we break down the individual scenarios, how they're done, because it's kind of like a, a crash course on how you handle certain engagements. Obviously, if he was playing solo trios or solo quads, you would handle it a little bit differently because you'd have to be aware of that third person or that fourth. You can see that guy just landed down. The elevation was higher, so the guy picked up floor loot. He ended up buying a guy back, or maybe he was gliding down from somewhere. Either way, now there's two things. And this guy's in the vehicle. So he starts banging, you know, basically wall banging the vehicle, if you want to call it that. Takes this guy down. This guy was a 1.41. And then he peaks the air because what happens is a lot of times if you look in the sky, the person won't render. But when you actually aim down sight, you get that render visibility. Um, so that's why he's doing that. And he still has 100K. The other part that stacks with it, like I said, with Hardline, the UAVs, to get a super UAV is only 9 grand versus 12. So it allows you to just push the pace. Um, that's why a lot of times in these, they're not even picking up contracts anymore um, to take them off track. They're literally just getting super UAV and pushing as fast as possible to try and rack up the kills. So obviously you got to be comfortable with your gunfights. You're going to lose a lot of these gunfights. He himself probably had to learn how to lose a lot of these gunfights to get really good at them because he, he used to be a former pro BR player in H1Z1 um, and, and has had a lot of success in, in battle royales and he just kind of built different where he has those reps he just sees the situations differently an absolute kobe machine like every nade he throws is like perfect and on point you can see this team was another 1.12 and a 1.06 a little bit different guys than we saw earlier but they were coming down 19 kills combined and this is a typical lobby that i think the vast majority of average to above average players get in um where you're dealing with these types of scenarios you can see where he's already looking at the map. You can see that some people are by the loadout. There's some people, or not by the loadout, but on the opposite side of the loadout. And then there's some people farther to the right in, in downtown. So he's already at four, not downtown, but neighborhood. So he, he sees there's two teams here um, because there's a vehicle pushing. There's another team here. He kind of splits the difference, comes through. This guy is still trying to be peek on that. He didn't realize he had jumped out. He snaps on the other guy. These are two separate teams. That's two separate team wipes. A uh, 0.81 KD was the first guy. A 1.24 was the second guy. So he's already on to a great game. He's pushing the pace. Um, and like we said, vehicles are really important. He doesn't have a trophy. So a lot of times when you push up on someone, you're either going to take the risk where, you know, the, the person is going to throw a C4 um, or, you know, you're just going to not be risky and then push back off, jump out of the vehicle beforehand. So he gets it nice, easy down here. Then by the time he realizes he gets shot in the back uh, by some guy just crouch walking, not crouch walking, but ADS walking. So he couldn't be seen. By the time he came up, it was too late. That player that took him out was a 1.42. And we're going to see that guy pop up again because he will get his revenge. Um, the other part that we've seen from a lot of these top players is they win the gulags. One is you got to be super accurate with the gulags. Um, you got to be because the health is diminished. So you got to play your life a little bit slower. And a lot of times that's what you'll see them do is they generally like will be pre-aiming a little bit more because the TTK is actually faster than it takes you to aim down sight. So even if you have the best reaction time, it's kind of hard to win those gunfights um, if you do not have the first, you know, draw. He still has $17,000 because you keep a lot of your money. And then here he is with the stoner, 120 rounds, pre-aims, waits. The guy just happens to run out. No 
Sometimes people will head glitch on that car, and that's kind of where he was pre-aiming. And that guy was in attack sprint, okay. literally had no chance. By the time he came around the corner, he was done. So he's going to come back, either go for the loadout, one. Um, or he can just try to get the guns that are in that area, because there are a lot of guns. And then play his situation, because he did kill the guy with the Amex, and then he shot the other guy in the back with the LC-10, I believe. Um, so now he's just coming back, getting his loadout. A lot of high kill games are ended by that gulag loss. So if you're playing solo, you just got to focus on getting better at gulags. Um, and generally it requires playing a little bit more passive and patient, waiting for your enemy to give audio cues, because generally the gulag is pretty silent, says, unless people are throwing rocks at you. So he comes around, perfect timing, and he just ends up seeing the guy in the back. I know it's a little bit blurry because of the way the image is recorded, but I guarantee you on their screen, at the right resolution, they're seeing people in front of them a little bit better. So he ends up getting his his guns back essentially because he grabbed the loadout, um, and then now he's rotating across, right? So gonna get a vehicle, try and rotate back to kind of uh, up the hill, try and push somebody. He needs to get to a buy station so he can get a UAV. This is probably the riskiest part of the actual like this run because everyone knows where he's at if he's on the vehicle, and then on top of that, he ends up in a situation where like. Everyone could be looking at him. He doesn't know where they're at because he doesn't have the, the tools that a UAV will give. Um, but he was able to clean that. So super risky part. Obviously, they weigh the risk. They know it. Somebody could have just been on the hill. Somebody could have been camping up here. They could have had double proximite. There's a lot of things that could go bad with these types of things. And obviously, since he doesn't know where anyone's at, there is a helicopter to the left. So you would make an assumption that there's somebody probably nearby because that's not a spawn helicopter. Um, so you kind of just got to play that the right way. He's just peeking, looking around. Those are the common hotspot areas. And that's what you'll see a lot of uh, top players do. They're, they're just generally looking at the... They have good centering, good crosshair placement. They're looking at the areas where the probability of a good player is... is Or not a good player, but players in general are higher, right? So he's just peeking the area, assessing it. You can see somebody got wiped out. They left the, the armor box. He still has his dead silence. And now he's going to go ahead and push. The health on this is only about 30%. Um, you can see that there's a loadout in front of him. So maybe that means those people will probably be touching and that there's generally two people because most people don't buy a loadout when they're down a player, right? So you can see where they're shooting. He throws the god nade, got the perfect stun, gets the other guy, throws up the vehicle, and then he ends up finishing both of them off because they have Deddy. And this is a revenge kill. You can see right there on the screen. This is the guy who killed him earlier. Um, I guess they were trying to get their loadouts again. He was able to get his uh, specialist bonus. He's going to come back out, grab that. And then now he basically has all the perks. He has a UAV. And they had his money. So essentially, he came up big by, by taking them out. So pretty good there. He's going to go ahead and hack this so it works for him. The timing's uh, important. Like, you got to get the crosshair in the right spot, right? So much for being my trophy system. So there it goes. Perfect. He hacked that. You can see the other guy is gliding down. He peeks it really quick. You can't see the guy. Um, that is likely, oh, there he is, yeah. tap firing, the guy is so far, that's a really hard shot with the Amex. So either way, he knows that that guy, uh, he can hold them because the guy will likely land where that loot is, right? He's just waiting to kind of bait the guy and hopefully get the guy on an easy kill. So he got to self-revive, a UAV, getting more UAVs, paying attention to what's going on. And these little lulls happen, um, but this is all as a result. This could have easily been, as you'll see, it could have been like a 45, 50 kill game if he doesn't die to that guy in the back because he already has one down. He'll probably get the next one that's on top of the building. Ends up snapping and destroying that dude. And that's the second time he killed that dude who ended up killing him. So he got his revenge in full. So you can see where it's at. There's still a lot of players left. Um, and a lot of these high kill games... It's a little bit of RNG. It's just random luck. Um, because it's like who, how many engagements are going to happen where you can actually push it. It looks like he's going to third party this because it looked like somebody was coming in. He's peeking. You can see he's using the rock as cover. Somebody shot the RPG. I guess they were trying to shoot him. He comes through, almost dies. But since he has all the perks, his health comes back fully because of the quick fix. So it comes in super clutch. He, you can see he's playing the different angles. That guy tries to melee him. He plays the situation, takes the guy out. And you'll see a lot of the, the top players do that too. They'll over jump to essentially break past the person's view. 
And they do that for a couple different reasons. One, there's a huge desync behind what each player sees. And then two, a lot of times if somebody has a slower aim down sight, they won't be able to track quick enough, especially if they're already hard aiming at that close range. So you're, you're basically breaking that, that person in a couple different ways where they're not set up into being in a good spot. Um, they'll often re-challenge when they're low health because maybe that person's not going to expect it. You just come out super aggressive and you go for it. You saw someone here earlier. Uh, that's why I'm thinking he came over here. I wasn't really watching right now. I was kind of talking. But then he ends up taking this dude out. Pretty easy kill. And then there you go. So that guy must have grabbed his, like, his ghost loadout nearby and then just ran in. So there's another guy landing in. He's looking for him. That guy's gliding a little bit further away. He'll eventually get him because it looks like that guy's landing by himself in no man's land. He might be trying to land up near his teammate at the top. So he still knows where those snipers are. He's going to end up approaching them. The vehicle's a good way to go. Obviously, if they hit a clean snipe, everyone has ghosts in this area. You can see it literally disappeared. But he's pushing for these snipers knowing where they're at. So this push... Super clean. He's coming around trying to get an angle on them. He's using the camera of the third person camera that you get in a vehicle that is pretty broken. He spots the guy. And then now he's going to go ahead and push away. Get himself some cover. Break out. End up deleting this dude. Not the best players here. 1.09 and then a .91. So he takes that dude. Gives a call out. They both have ghost. So he's peeking like, uh, where's this guy at? Without over committing. Um, a lot of times if you overcommit, that's sometimes how you get in a bad spot because you can't get out of there. The guy's looking at the angle where his teammate died. He shot him. The guy comes out. Yeah. So sometimes you do end up with bots in your lobby, but literally not everyone is going to be a bot, right? Like that guy, clearly not the best player, but that's okay. Sometimes new players got to get a little bit more accustomed to playing the game. They don't get it. Teammate might not give him the best call out. I don't know. Because uh, a lot of times if you die, you can spectate the enemy like for a quick second before the camera adjusts to your actual teammate. So maybe they weren't giving the proper call outs. You can see there's four people over here, at least four it looks like. He's going to push up. And again, what? since this is duos, that means there's two teams involved, right? He ends up shooting this guy here, broke the armor. The, the other guy stole the kill. He throws a stun. Looks like there's still two people in there. They ended up dying. He's looking at the footprints. He's peeking. This guy's on the floor basically plating up. He downs that guy. He has self-revive. He's just double-checking if there's anyone, even though literally everyone died. The guy that was outside, the two on the floor, and then the other one. Somebody is peeking from farther away, but it's kind of hard to tell exactly where they're at. Just double-checking the area, using stuns, as you'll see right here. Throws the perfect stun in there. Yep, nobody's in there. Area's clear. Got a gas mask. Let me go ahead and call a UAV, find out where everyone's at, and now I can push that direction. Hold one for my back pocket. You can see he's not calling in the super even though he has the cash um, because he knows that probably after this, he's going to have to get another one. He's paying attention to behaviors. One guy's a little bit higher elevation. Oh, no, they're both higher right now. They're both on his level. You can see that the dots changed. And then they're literally touching. He thought they were going to break through the door. He comes out. LC10 does a good amount of damage, but he ended up shooting the other guy. And then he plays this pretty good. The guy that jumped up the fence, he can't jump back over. So he comes around. You can see how he slid around. Literally, the guy has no chance because he's already almost behind him. Comes out. This was a pretty close gunfight. He downs the guy. He's in a pretty good spot. Fully plates. A lot of times, this is where you get third partied. Come by. Finish that dude. Easily enough done. And those guys weren't particularly great. But you're going to see he runs into some demons here. Um, and it's, it's phenomenal outplay. It's just phenomenal. Um, so he's coming up. Left side. He had already marked on the map where some people were. So you can see he's kind of working his way towards that area uh, based off the fact that he knows where comp people are. He does have money. Oh, they're the guy. They gave away their self with that cold-blooded. They don't have cold-blooded. He has high alert. And he ends up in a terrible spot. But look at what he does here. So he backs off. All they need is one bullet. He's playing his life. Gets the plate in there. Gets fully plated, fully held. Peaks one guy and then readjusts his aim, takes out the other guy. And these guys were a 1.5 and a 1.93 with one guy having over 100 kills, way above win-loss ratios, and he just dumpstered them. They did not expect that. Sometimes what happens is when you damage players, you don't realize that they could be replated, so you take a fight a little bit more lax. Everyone's guilty of it. Like when you think someone's one shot, maybe you jump around the corner. If That's why bait and switch works so good because you're like, oh, 
It should be one shot. And then his teammate comes back and you're like, all right, cool, I just need to land one shot. And then you get destroyed because you weren't expecting it. But you know what I mean? Like it, those trade-offs can throw you off. And when you get laxed, you will lose a gunfight. You just will. That's kind of how it goes. Um, but he handled it perfectly. He was literally one bullet away. And no one can say, hey, my people shoot back or whatever. That's, you know, literally he has everyone shooting back at him when he's in the fight. He gets sniped here. He plates up. He peeks. And then you could see he, he thought it was one person. But then when he double checks, he sees that there's two. So you can oh, see yeah. one open. Oh, he's like, oh, shoot, back off. Throws a stun. And then he jumps out hard again. Takes this guy out. Throws another stun. They know that they're ADSing. He breaks past the camera. You have to assume every time you use stuns that the player you're going against has aim assist. And what I mean by that is if you guys didn't know, aim assist still works pretty strong, if not even stronger when you are stunned. So if the player crosses the middle of your screen while you're stunned, you'll essentially be a lock-on, which I don't think that's the way it should be. I think it should be nerfed to actually be like where it really disorients you and maybe for less time, they got to just rework it because literally if he stuns and then jumps back out and that person's where their ADS, they can track and they'll literally land every shot, no matter how bad or good that player is. Literally if their ADS, it'll track because of how the stun mechanic works and the fact you're moving you get this super aim assist, I guess you would call it. So he played it perfectly, threw the stun, broke past, took out one, threw another stun, and then went all the way around so that that person wouldn't be aimed down sight at them. Ended up shooting this. Feels comfortable. You can see the vehicle still red. The second the vehicle changes color, you can see he's like, oops, all right, cool, let me switch guns. He's peeking the right. He's like, where'd this guy go? You can see the footprints. He comes back out. You can see how he does that little bit of a, a slide, ADS, slide cancel. He slide cancels into it. So it's like a slide, slide, it's a slide cancel. And then he pops up, aim down sight, takes the dude out. Pretty clean kill. So right now we're, we're in a, a 1v1v2. Um, there's one guy left on the right that I think ends up being sniping him by the loadout. You can see the guy right there with the glint on the right hand side. Uh, it, it, there was there for like a half second um, right next to the camera. So he's going to go peek where that guy is. It looks like this guy ran into that little building. And this is where FMJ comes in. So if you have specialist bonus, definitely run FMJ. I mean, definitely run, like, be be aware that you can shoot through almost anything. So he knows kind of where that guy's at. He's going to double check it. He throws this in case he gets something shot at him. This is obviously that person's loadout or maybe some other people on the map. He said, I can wall bang this. Literally shoots. And it's a little small, narrow error. The guy ends up running. He gets the kill. And this is a guy he killed earlier as well, I believe. 0.9 KD, 9 wins, 1, uh, one win percentage. These guys choke. Um, they have the high ground. They actually they have positive KDs. Uh, one quick shout out. Check out his links near the top of the description. I know a lot of people click away when people pull off the win. Go check out his channel on Twitch. Let him know I sent you for YouTube and Twitch. So... He takes out this first guy. He mounted, tried to get a clean kill. He's pushing the distance, and this this nade is just so beautiful. Uh, you see it thrown perfectly. He's right at the cover, breaks the line of sight, reloads, boom, gets the guy finished. Aim down sight, takes him out, and that is a dub. A 37 kill, 11,000 damage game. Um, like I said, definitely go check him out. Let him know I sent you. He's a top-tier player, absolute monster at the game. And he reads his chat. So if you want to engage with him, kind of pick his brain, why he does certain things, or maybe how he played a certain situation and why he did, that is the guy. So definitely go check him out. If you enjoyed the video, let me know by hitting the like button if you're brand new and want to find your way back. Double check. Make sure you subscribe with notifications on. Appreciate all the support. Thank you for watching. As always, have a great day.